Well, we've got breaking news to bring you out of Mexico. The Mexican national team have fired head coach Jaime Lozano following a disappointing exit from Copa America. The former midfielder got off to a stellar start to his tenure as interim head coach, winning the 2023 Gold Cup while conceding only two goals. But after scraping by Honduras in the 2023-24 Nations League, Mexico then fell to the US in the final. And after a group stage exit, at this summer's Copa America, that proved to be the final straw for Lozano. The Federation did say that they had offered Lozano a deal to stay on as an assistant until 2026 and then regain his position as head coach, but he has declined. And for more on this, let's welcome in our Felipe Cardenas to join us. Uh, Felipe, we appreciate you joining us. It's quite a unique situation, isn't it, what we're seeing here? What's your reaction to all this news? Well, I mean, the reports were accurate then. I think starting about three or four days ago, reports starting to circulate and swirl in Mexico that Jaime Lozano was going to be asked to step down. And not only that, but he would be given an opportunity to join the next staff. And, and right now, the name that has been really hot in Mexico is is Javier Aguirre, who is the uh, probably the most uh, highly renowned Mexican coach right now. Uh, coached Mexico in the 2002 World Cup, 2010 World Cup, and most recently coached La Liga San Mallorca. And so that's what the reports were saying, that Jaime Lozano, the young coach, the coach that everyone had gotten behind in Mexico when he won the Gold Cup in 2023 and looked like the future of this national team, was going to be asked to become an assistant after being the head coach. And so certainly not surprising that he said no. It is, to your point, Poppy, uh, 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 I, don't, I don't think I've, I've seen this before, where a national team says, hey, like, you're going to you're going to be demoted, but stay around. And, in, you know, in four or three in, in four years time, we'll give you the job again. I don't know who would say yes to that, to be honest with you. And so Jaime Lozano has declined that option. And I think, you know, having sat with him in March before the Nations League final, which they lost to the United States uh, in Dallas, you know, I walked away very impressed by him. You know, he I think he did have uh, the locker room very tight and and, and the coach, the players did like him. But this again, this comes down to results. And, and, and I've been on this network. I've been asked by you all. Is he under pressure? Is Jaime Lozano under pressure? And like the answer has always been yes but there was a sense you know that maybe he would survive it uh, but in the end, I think his inexperience and the fact that, as you mentioned, Poppy, just crashing out of the Copa America uh, just didn't do anybody any favor, certainly not him and his staff. I'm not sure there's many people out there that would not accept a three-year vacation, then picking up a four-year <laughs> contract to basically get paid to do nothing to then once again be in charge and hopefully the Mexican national team are actually better by then. Jimmy Lozano is a little bit unfortunate here, um, Felipe. Obviously, the team didn't get the results, but what do you put that down to? And where did it go wrong for him in his time as boss? Well, I think, again, what have we been talking about for the last two years now, since the last World Cup, is that the talent level in Mexico, it, it hasn't been good enough to take them to any sort of elite status, right? Not even in their own region. They've been taken over by the United States. Uh, if it's not three straight losses, it's four straight losses to the Americans in, in big finals. Uh, and that really, you know, sank the boat for Mexico. And then you just look at the team. It's not like this is a bad team. They're just very average, in my opinion. They have a few good players that are playing in Europe. Edson Alvarez, the captain. You know, obviously he was injured uh, right away in the Copa America, and that didn't do them. That didn't help them at all, right? But. If you look at the, the the talent level right now, both in Liga MX East from from the homegrowns all the way up to the veteran Mexican players, and then the players that right now are are, are featuring for the national team, the, it's just not at the level that you would expect them to be, and and certainly not at a level where they can compete to win major trophies. And I think the Copa America uh, was an example of that. They were in a group that was was competitive, but one that traditionally Mexico is getting out of. I mean, Jamaica, Venezuela, and Ecuador. And, you know, those are teams that. I think Mexico would feel good competing against and, and getting out of that group, and they didn't. They, they continue this, this sort of very mediocre uh, path towards 2026 where they're going to be a co-host, and they're going to host the inaugural game at, the, at a remodeled Azteca. And I think all of those those details you know, started to work in Jaime Lozano's, or started to work against him, I'm sorry, because once, once you start putting the, the project together, 
before the World Cup and you see him as the figurehead and it starts to crumble two years before and you're looking at the United States, they've made a move with Greg Berhalter. You're looking at Canada and suddenly Canada looks like they're on the right path. Of all the three co-hosts with Jesse Morris in charge getting to a semifinal of a Copa America, you know, that's pressure. That puts pressure on every other host country. So I think Mexico felt the pressure. You know, the pundits were saying Jaime Lozano not experienced enough for this position. It, there's the old adage that it's the, the toughest job in Mexico, tougher than being the president of the, of, of the country. And I think this proved it. Jaime Lozano just couldn't survive. And you mentioned Felipe as well, Mexico obviously co-hosting the World Cup, which also means they've got no real massively big games of significant importance coming up in terms of what it would mean to qualify. So now this new manager is going to come in, obviously, and kind of have the same run in to host the World Cup as what we're going to see with the U.S. men's national team as well. So where do Mexico go from here and how confident are you that they will get back on track before the World Cup? You know, my, my confidence in Mexico right now, it's it's pretty low. But if, to your point, they don't have the World Cup qualifiers, the, the pressure that that brings. And that, that can sometimes make the team, make teams a lot better. It, gets, it puts them in a moment where they need to handle pressure. And that's what Canada did in the last World Cup cycle. Uh, but Mexico, yeah, they, they don't have those games. And so that's why I think a coach like Javier Aguirre is, go, is, is going to get the job. You know, he was brought in sort of behind closed doors when Jaime Lozano was hired as a consultant. Fulton, you know, like I mentioned before, highly regarded, you know, probably considered the best Mexican coach in the history of the national team. I mean, that right away just tells you, like, if he doesn't get the job, then I don't know who does. And I don't know who wants it either. And so, you know, I think Javier Aguirre will get this, will get the call if he hasn't already. Uh, and perhaps that's the, the difference here, Poppy. You know, if, if the talent level isn't where it needs to be, then maybe it's the coach, the veteran coach uh, who's been at two World Cups, who's coached in Spain, has coached in Europe for several years now, uh, understands the pressure that 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 it, that that, it, that he'll be under in Mexico, can really handle it, is very well respected. I don't think anything is going to phase him at this point. And then you put him in front of this team that is is young, it's it's a bit inexperienced, and 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 it does need, I think, some some a different kind of type of motivation. You know, maybe he's the answer here to at least get them to the point where when they get to the 2026 World Cup, they're respected. I think that's all that this is coming down to. Perhaps the Federation was thinking, are we really going to be respected with a, a young, inexperienced coach that hasn't been tested enough? And then when he was tested at the, the, the Copa America, unable to get him, uh, unable to get Mexico into the second round. So that's, I think that's where we are. That's where we are. I think Javier Aguirre could be the answer here. He's coming off the back of a good season, obviously, with Mallorca getting to a cup final, which is really impressive. I think it was Monterrey in 21 where he had success in the Champions League as well, and relatively good success when it comes to La Liga. With, I think he's coached six different teams in the Spanish La Liga, yeah. so he brings a great deal of experience. But it brings me to my next question, where you have, obviously, the U.S. national team and you have Mexico both now without a boss, searching for a boss. Could we see a battle of... Basically, the Federation is trying to find the best boss right now, potentially trying to figure out how they're going to go forward. What would be the better job, do you think, between Mexico and the U.S. national team going forward? Because both rosters are pretty stacked and underperforming. <laughs> Yeah, I think I would say the U.S. is the better job. You know, I think the team is better, uh, and you're going to have uh, you know certain resources that perhaps you wouldn't get in Mexico. Although Mexico, I mean, again, from from having covered Mexico over three years now, the federation has a lot of money. I think they can hire anybody they want. It's it's are they putting those resources to good use? And you could argue the same with the U.S. Do they have the right resources to to really attract the right coach? I mean, there were reports in Spain over the last week that Luis de la Fuente, who just won the European Championship with Spain was sort of angling for a new contract, you know, may, perhaps putting out feelers there, a link to the to the U.S. job, link to the Mexico job. So to your point there, uh, Ian, I think you know, would that would could that take place where both teams are not going after the top coaches in the world and presenting their projects as you know which one which one which seat would you like to sit in? You know, I don't think it's going to get to that though. I, I think Mexico has their man. I think they're going to feel really comfortable and confident in hiring Aguirre because he's 
been in the role already at two World Cups. And, you know, like I said before, I can't, I'm repeating myself here, but it is true. It, it's hard for a Mexican manager to be that respected within Mexico, within not, you know, not just by the pundits, but by the officials and by the owners that, that make these heavy decisions in Mexico. So I think the U.S. is going to take their own search a certain way and Mexico is going to go in another direction. Well, Mexico, not the only team now that's going in a different direction because four managers from this Copa America have been sacked following the competition. Are you surprised, Felipe, about how defining this period has been this summer with the Copa America in particular? I'm not because, you know, the Copa America over the years, I think when it's come, when it comes to the United States, there's just additional context that, that it almost makes it feel like a different tournament. But the, the stakes are still as high as if they, if they were playing at the, hosting the tournament in Brazil or Argentina or Paraguay like they have in the, in the past. It is a very, very important tournament for the South American nations. It's everything to them. You know, there's the World Cup, yes, but the Copa America is where every South American nation really has to put on the, their best effort. Uh, and the pressure is on these coaches to do well and to get into the knockout rounds and 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 especially in, in a World Cup cycle. They're qualifying right now in Coma Bowl. And, and the Copa America was it's either it shows the federation and it shows the bosses like where are we on the right path? And so when you don't do well at a tournament like this, and Paraguay didn't do well, Ecuador, that was a surprise though. You know, they get into that they lose in penalties to Argentina and Felix Sanchez is dismissed. There were rumors that he had a deal already done with a Saudi club, so you know I can't confirm that but you know I just think that the stakes are always so high and you can't go into this into this tournament and and, and say well, we're going to test players and you know what that's what Mexico decided to do remember they went public with that so suddenly that plan blew up in their face and and the egg is on the face of the sporting director and the federation because they were like hey we're, we're going to this Copa America we're just going to try to test players we want our players going to europe we're going to showcase our talent and then they can't even get out of the group and so that didn't work out for them and i think that's why again losano's out and that's why you saw the other coaches from the other countries also lose their jobs yeah so true it's a risk that didn't pay off isn't it especially for mexico felipe thank you so much for joining us thanks for staying up late with us yeah, good to good see job, you buddy. anytime anytime great to see you both <laughs> all right stay with us we've got more scoreline to come after this short break